Welcome back to the Crushing Iron Triathlon Podcast with the highly requested new old music. Good morning. Today is Boston Marathon Monday. It is April 16th, 2018. And that's right, you guessed it. This is Crushing Iron Triathlon podcast the crushing iron triathlon podcast with the new old music the the new old original back again 2.0 crushing iron intro music you're welcome (laughs) man i did not know that created such a firestorm seriously you know it kind of makes me wonder like how many things people just don't like about our podcast but haven't really told us yet yeah, well, we spent a lot of time in close proximity getting to know a lot of people this weekend, and they opened up, and one of the things they opened up about was, please go back to the original music. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it was sort did, of an I, emotional thing for them. I didn't even think, I didn't even hear a please. I heard a, you should probably go back yeah. to the original music. <laughs> like, I think, I feel like you guys have probably lost a few listeners from the new intro music. Yeah, I think people were confused. We confuse people often, or at least I do. Yeah, well, the first 15 minutes is always often confusing. Yeah, which is uh, which also I'm finding out is some of the, f- the long-time listeners find the first 15 minutes some of the more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. I mean, which it is takes good. A, it takes a while to wet your palate <clears throat> That's for, true. for what's going on here, because uh, until you really get to know us, uh, it's kind of hard to figure out what the heck we're talking about. Yeah. And in the beginning, but then we get in, in the, the beginning. Yeah, I mean, and you should. It should take you time to get to know people, but I feel like that's what pe- you know keeps people coming back. So you really get to know the, you know, you and I and the people who the guys that put on the podcast, and it helps generate, I think, a little more of a connection uh, with who you're listening to instead of just you know guest after guest after guest after guest. Um, you know, it's kind of you know, we our podcast we like to look at it as a as a long standing, fulfilling relationship, and, and a lot of other podcasts out there that just do guests over and over again. It's kind of like speed dating. Yeah, yeah. You just sit down, you go from we move from one on to the next, and it's hard to hard to get a connection. So we appreciate it. <clears throat> right, and we also realize that you know we're not going to go down a list of ten ways to help you swim today. And like create a, you run out of things. This is 155 podcasts, and uh, we're de- we're digging deeper, right? You know, we go into a lot of the emotional and uh, you know familial. Is that the word? Ooh, I don't know, but it sounds it sounds impressive. Yeah, like how this sport really kind of uh, gets into your life, and how you can make it more of an asset in your life than a than a cha- you know than a pain in the butt really mm-hmm. and i can i should have said pain in the ass because i'm i'm being real proper here because i'm thinking well this is the first <laughs> time but this is you know what we do yeah and, that's uh, true we give a lot of information in the weaving in and out of sort of personal stories and we're kind of uh this is sort of, uh, you know, because I, I was watching some Hunter S. Thompson stuff the other night, and he's an originator of gonzo journalism where he embeds himself into the story. And that's really kind of what's going on here is we are part of uh, this journey with everyone else that's listening. And, you know, like this weekend we had camp, and we were doing camp and then talking with people and instructing. And um, so we're in the story. We're not t- talking about the story from the outside, and that, and then there's a lot of uh, good nuggets about triathlon and how to succeed in this sport, how to get mm-hmm. better in this sport, how to ad- help it adapt to your lifestyle better, and how to go for the long run and make this an enjoyable journey all the way, as long as you want to make it. Man, you're on a roll this morning. I don't know. I've been up. I mean. You, I, I, <laughs> no, bro, you're still in your jammies, dude. No, no, no. I mean, literally, no? we've been, uh, you know, we went to Texas about a week and a half ago. Well, I don't even remember when that was, but I feel like we've been nonstop triathlon for about 10 straight days. In the fact, days I thought you were first. taking the day off. What's going on? Uh, well, I, we can't. 
and this is uh we got to put this out there man every monday and every monday and thursday but uh other than that today i am uh straight up nurturing my introvert today so uh (laughs) after after you and i get off this i'm going to be um you know very 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 uh hey but you know what i got work to do i'll probably turn on like the boston marathon coverage just in the background uh prop my feet up uh catch up from a few things over the weekend got a few swim analysis to do but um but yeah i uh, i don't plan on i'll go swim but i don't plan on speaking to anybody so the next person i plan on speaking to today after we get done recording this is uh my son when i pick him up from daycare so Ooh. and he can he, he can rarely talk back so um yeah gonna yeah been going 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 so but I, I enjoy it i love it it's it's good but i think that you know as with everything you you got to take time to kind of re-energize um yourself and so i'm gonna get a little gonna get a little bit of me time today when i go swim that's the balance right i mean we've been it's like we've had a race every day for the last 10 days it basically, yeah. I mean, it was weird to think about yesterday, as we kind of wrapped up our first triathlon camp of the year. Um, it seemed like a month and a half ago that I raced in Texas. And I was yeah. like, it was, it's just like a week ago. But a lot of things, a lot of things can happen. A lot of things can change in a week. And uh, so, yeah, back at it, and just over a week, yeah, we were we weren't even back in town this time last week. And since, and we've already we put on a four day camp for about. 20 individuals from all over the country and now we're back at it and doing this podcast boston marathons today with some crazy weather it looks like so we have a bunch of athletes there we'll be cheering on uh from uh from well the not so warm (laughs) city of nashville um and uh yeah and i I gotta say if you're most of i know we have a, a huge following I guess huge is relative, but uh, you know, in the Midwest and Northern, especially Northeast, and you guys are just getting pounded with the crap weather. So, uh, if you made it into town this week, we had some <clears throat> uh, very, very kind weather for the most part. Thursday and Friday for our big days, it was like mid to high seventies, uh, and then today actually uh, it's cloudy. It rained a little bit overnight, and I can see spitting snow from my window in the office. Can you really? Wow. Yeah. So uh, how? Th- yeah. Speaking of things, how things can change quickly. Yep. And if you are, you know, kind of new to the podcast or just kind of playing around the edges, this uh, we did have a camp this weekend, and I will be compiling videos and things of that nature and putting them in our closed group, which you can find on Facebook uh, by searching "Crushing Iron Group," and you kind of get a taste of what we were doing at camp and some of the the scenery and venues and things that we did with about 20 people and from eight or 10 states i don't know from uh, all over it was the place closer to 10 yeah they were all over we had Literally. kansas ohio virginia illinois um tennessee obviously georgia um new york michigan Minnesota. new york yeah yeah we were we were missing ohio we were missing, but ohio. yeah all over yep so yeah we uh you know, we kind of position it as an alternative vacation, you know, with some uh, tri training in the middle. And a lot of people got out to explore the city and got in a lot of good work and had a good time doing it. What great attitudes. Um, we coach a lot of the athletes that came in, so I want to make sure that everybody knows there is coaching available. That's at crushingiron.com. You can find out all the packages and the pricing and things like that. There's a lot of videos there. Follow us on YouTube, Crushing Iron. C26 underscore triathlon on Instagram. We've got to get these. There's a lot of stuff we got to get moving a little harder. But, uh, you know, um, we learned a lot this weekend. What did you learn? Anything? Oh, man. What did I always learn a ton? Um, you know, I, I think one of the one great of biggest, people come to camp. I can tell you that. I can, That's probably I the can, number one thing I, earned, I learned. Yeah. Or relearned, um, I should say. Yeah, you were reminded. I, I was too. It's just, uh, it is. You know, triathlon can be a, a scary place, not just for the information, but with the people. Um, if we're being honest, and uh, for some reason, we get some of the best people uh, at camp. 
um, it's incredibly kind and generous and supportive and everybody's there to have a good time and be friendly and you don't have uh, you know it, you, you have type A personalities but you don't have the type A egos that usually come along with uh, and the selfishness that you can often come along with uh, you know triathlon and triathletes in the sport and so uh, yeah super awesome people you know laid back always trying to work hard and be supportive and uh, we had a we had a really really good time. So it's nice, to, especially and a lot of them comments. And you know, it's so nice to when you can when you train alone so much of the year. It's nice to come together. But I think one of the biggest takeaways I took um, would be that a lot of the athletes took their nutrition and their recovery much more seriously uh, during camp than they would have on a normal basis because. I don't want to say it was out of fear, but <clears throat> they knew that they had to basically treat every single day uh, and respect it because they had to come back and they knew they had, they had to put a big effort and a long day in the next day. And they were working incredibly hard, and, and they were, but then again, they were also surprised at what they were able to do. And a lot of them commented, at least to me, that they they knew they were working hard, but they weren't as sore as they expected to be. Um, and then they, but they attributed that to, and I would agree is that they, they really focused a lot more on their fueling, uh, and their nutrition and their recovery than they would have on a, you know, if they were just at home and, and, and given the fact that, you know, like most of them, most everyone was away from, you know, some kind of, you know, they're away from work, they're away from other family obligations. So they could just strictly focus on recovery and then taking in certain things. But even then, even while they were working out, I mean, most athletes, most all athletes, you know, that we got came from like the frozen tundra and they're all of a sudden smack dab sitting in the middle of, of hard training days and huge hills and, and almost 80 degree weather. And so they really, really took things seriously. And I think that, this is one of the things we covered on uh, Saturday morning when I talked about the nutrition and race day fueling and stuff, and especially in training, it, it you're yes, are you are you fueling for the workout that you're in? Yes, but you, more often times than not, you're actually fueling for the next workout. In that, if you don't take care of your body and you don't take in the amount of calories, you know a lot of people do that. They want to take in you know minimum calories because they're trying to cut weight or or get to race weight or you know they they like oh, I only took in this many calories for this uh, this training session. And then they wake up the next day and their muscles and their body is is cooked, and that's for good reason. You know you need fuel to. Uh, recover, and so that was one of the one of the bigger takeaways um, that I had. And then just you know, also reminded of how fortunate we are here living in uh, in Nashville to have the opportunities to train that we have that a lot of places don't. Mm -hmm. That's a good observation on the recovery because the other thing I noticed was um, that as we were talking about it, it was almost like preparing for a race maybe like three days in a row because we were doing multiple events and and everybody was uh going to bed early here you know i, I hosted a, a few guys and they were super guys and i was i really enjoyed being around them and you know it was like nine o'clock and i was like pulling out the board games and trying to have fun <laughs> and part cheesy and trying to play euchre and all these and they were ready to go to bed i mean they were kind of in a good way, sort of forced me to go to bed a little bit early. And it, it does matter when you get sleep and get good rest. And um, um, and it's and it's kind of interesting to watch everybody load up because you kind of leave early in the morning and you go to the different locations and you got to be sort of packed up for the day. And it is a little bit of a, a race prep in a way where you got to bring all this different stuff and you don't want to forget your running shoes and or your nutrition and things like that. And, and, uh, I think the more just, you know, that was the other underlying thing was the confidence that people talked about. And I interviewed a lot of the campers and just to kind of get their feedback on whatever. And I'll be posting some of that. But one of the common threads was that, as you mentioned, they were doing stuff that they hadn't been doing, or certainly not this year with regard to riding, big hills with a lot of wind outside and then running tough hilly runs and then jumping in the cold water and there's all these things going on and 
just I can't over or um, uh, what's the word over emphasize how doing these sorts of things in a group and getting through them builds your confidence. And I think mm-hmm. the more you do that throughout the year, uh, we we, we kind of joke about the word epic, but these like bigger, tougher days. And you can, you know, with the encouragement around you and the support around you, and you get through these things, that's how you get better because that's how you get your mind straight and the confidence. I mean, the, if nothing else, the exposure to certain things that can make them more familiar. And, you know, these guys, you know, guys and girls that were here, they were going to go back to certain these races. They're never going to face anything like what we just did on their next Olympic or something like that, you know, yep. or, or any of these, you know. So it's kind of cool to watch them go above and beyond where they thought they might be with, you know, slow strides in the right direction and how that mm-hmm. will pay off in the long run. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the other things I also learned um, was just the how your mind can take over. Uh, and so like, on no, Saturday, Friday, we it's been the, in the weeks leading up to, to camp. It had been very, very cold in Nashville. Luckily, we lucked out with camp with some warmer temperatures, and so we were able to make it out to the lake. And we were all in wetsuits, and we got you know 18, 20 athletes out there, and it's uh, it's 75, 80 degrees, so it's warm out of the water. And <clears throat> the the water temperature was around 57 or 58. So. That's chilly. Yeah, you know, it was cold, wet, man. Wet suit or not, it's it's straight chilly. Um, I mean, and you know, we all know triathletes hate the cold water as long as it's just cold enough to be wetsuit legal. You know, and a and a triathlete's favorite water temperature is like seventy one point nine because it's like just a few degrees below or seventy six or just a few degrees below what's definitely wetsuit legal, and then they're just going to wear it no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we get out there and, you know, we do some instruction and go over some, some wetsuit basics. And, uh, and the current was, was moving with a quickness. I mean, honestly, you and I have been going out there for years. And that's probably some, one of the quicker currents I've seen out there. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah in term, I mean, not, not big wide caps or anything, but in, in terms of current, it was moving. And so we send everybody out and the first 10 or 15 minutes, you can just tell. You know, it's, yeah, a couple strokes, then I'm going to stand up, and then I can't feel my face, and then I can't do this, and I can't, and I'm going to pause. And, you know, you know and it was, it's just hard. You know, it's, it, you're putting yourself in a very uncomfortable situation. So we bring everybody out of the water, and then we put everybody in something that we do often at camp, and we put everybody into relay mode, and re- relay slash race mode. So you split everybody up in teams. Uh, I think we ended up having like four teams and uh, we gave them, you know, the course that they're supposed to, to do. And then they get out, they uh, swim, they swim their course and their leg and they get out of the water and they run down the beach and then tag the next person. And you would have thought the water was 80. Yeah. There was no hesitation. They sprinted in the water, diving over the buoys uh, sprinting, getting out and running, and not one time in that about 30 minutes that we did the relays did one person talk about how cold the water was. They basically just forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, and I just thought that was, I just thought that was fascinating. Um, and you know that they went from being so mindful of, and I think it's like when you take your, a yes, I think it's like adding in the competition factor, but then when you take it's no longer about you and yeah it was like there's some like you know prize purse of five thousand dollars no well there was a we did give away a ninja turtle but there was uh you were you were now on a team and you didn't want to let your other athletes down and you were looking you were you weren't just racing against the athlete uh in the same heat or wave as you or the same leg but you were swimming for your team and every i just kept asking you know hey you just need you know this 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 and this and and they were talking, and they're like, they, "I was like, you guys could like, no, I, I just, I quit thinking about it." And it's just, it's, it's an, it's incredible what I think the mind can do, and how much your mind controls what your body pays attention to or doesn't pay attention to. And I just thought that was um, a. I thought they handled themselves just fantastically, but I thought that it was just, it was interesting to watch how 
basically the water temperature got thrown out the window and it all of a sudden just didn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just the inkling of that competitive angle and that, you know, that because that does happen. It's sort of like you get to a race and, you know, you don't have a choice. You got to go in and do it. And once you make that commitment to just getting there, then you just sort of like, all right, throw that part of it out, the elements for the most part. I mean, they can obviously be a huge factor in races and we've Mm -hmm. all struggled through tougher temps and winds and rain and whatnot but once you kind of get your mind set like you're talking about let's just flip that switch a little bit towards the end of the you know after the relays and a couple other drills and things we went through with your uh, your sighting exercises and uh which was really cool to see people sighting basically swimming cross current uh while the current was knocking them one way and how you need to sight you know off to the way off to the side to get to the right place and but at the mm-hmm. end, it was almost like I kind of sensed that people wanted to keep going. You know, they got used to that water. <laughs> there was a lot of yep. them that were just sort of like, oh, let's get the heck out of here. But some of them were like, oh, that's kind of cool, man. I'm, I'm adapted and I'm in the, the mode and, and I'm over it. I'm ready to go. But, yeah, yep. they were just, uh, you know, I was in the water early and then I, I decided to go opt for video. So I didn't get into race mode. So <laughs> I could feel that I know exactly <laughs> what that – fine line is and some people had said uh yeah i thought we could come out the lake kind of walk around out there and see how cold it was and then be like ah that's it but once the the competition started um yeah it was a whole day you know because that was the really the theme of the camp in a lot of ways it's like we go out and have a good time and everything like but there's just an element of like how are you going to get a little bit better today and how are we gonna um uh, there's never just sort of flailing around with no real purpose and there's there's always a kind of a direction and a goal in mind and and i think people pull out so many little nuggets at least that's you know i I was like i said i was staying with the three guys were staying here and we talked about it all the time you know after they got done and about the little things they were learning and just sharing with everybody because we would get get them in groups and um they made made a lot of good friends and they would just you know help each other and it you know you can't just like put that in a list there's like these little pieces of information that just kind of transfer and are like someone may hear something and this is how learning happens especially in this sport to me is like you may hear something 10 times and you don't even understand what's going on and then someone else will say it in a different way and then it clicks right Mm -hmm. so there was a lot of that conversation going on and uh uh, I, I really um, also like the nutrition piece, you know, because that was like, it was sort of like we were waiting for the rain to stop on Saturday morning and we got everybody together and you talked about four days leading up to nutrition and, uh, or the race nutrition, how you should handle mm-hmm. like the four days leading up to the race. And then we talked about the in-race stuff and that's just, that's like a Rubik's Cube for people like every yeah. time, you know. Yeah, it's a it, most for most people. It's a, it's a constant. Yeah, like they 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 don't they don't. I mean, dude, I, it's like straight snowing here. Sorry, I just looked at the window. It's like actually, I can see it on the road. Yeah. This is crazy. Um, anyway, anywho, yeah, it's uh, and it's like in the race day fueling, like until you find like the absolute perfect mix, you're almost always still dialing it in. And even then, once you get it to where like you think you had the perfect race, things are still going to change. Like you're you're going to choose a, di- a different distance, or you're going to get faster, so you can push you can push harder, and the intensity goes up. Well, then that changes everything, you know. And so things are always changing. But it's it's one of those very very difficult um, things to to kind of uh, to really grasp and consume because there is so much information and so many products, and everybody uses this, and everybody swears by this. Um, so it is. It's it's a lot to take in, but you know, and that that is that's 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 why I think that you know, and camp is so much fun as well. There's you can there's so many other people to to talk to and to hear from, and that was one of the we sent sent out a camp survey to get feedback, you know, because we're we are we're always trying to do things better and and provide a better experience for our athletes and and one of the comments was that I, it was just really great to hear and see other athletes abilities and race experiences and what they use or what they've had you know and just really soak in 
not just information from you and I, but the amount of information and experience that every other athlete has. You know, I mean, like, yeah, we had, you know, 20 athletes and not including you and I. And you, you know, you add in, you know, how many years they've been doing the sport. And you and I were looking at like 100, 100 plus years of triathlon experience combined. That's just a lot of, like, there's just a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience to soak in and a lot of things that you can learn from other athletes to do or a lot of times, more importantly, things not to do. You know, and and then seeing other people and and being supportive. It's just it's a it's just a, it's a great four days of just being a sponge and just soaking things in. And uh, I had a blast as I always do as coaching it and watching athletes learn and grow and just how you know attentive they all are uh, as you know when we slow things down and go over more instruction like we do in the pool and it was with the nutrition and stuff like that. It's just, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a great experience. And so, um, you know, I think that as we talked about, and I think, you know, most, most podcasts, but I think in just the last two or three, you know, this is how, how important it is to have positive influential people around you, um, that support what you're doing. And, you know, we had a lot of athletes that had a lot of personal bests. We had a lot of athletes doing things they thought they could never do. You know, we had a lot of athletes climbing, you know, more hills and more elevation than they would in a month in like a two day span, you know. And so it's just it's it's just great. It's it's there's something special about watching people do things or accomplish things that they thought that they never could or that they weren't sure that they were going to be able to complete. And so I just think it's a, there's a lot of just, there's some, there's so many good takeaways, um, you know, for, and then as a coach who coaches a lot of athletes remotely, it's always great to, to meet people in person and just gives you a a much better feel for the athlete and who they are and how they respond and, and, uh, and so forth. So yeah, it's, it's awesome. Well, think about what, and I got to give you some props on that. We have some good venues here for the camp and, uh, the way you design it, and I, th- I think that that um, I don't want to say goes over- underlooked, but or overlooked, but um, there was a lot of viable race simulation going on, and it wasn't that we were racing, but you know, you start and we talked about the hills at Natchez Trace and how you know a lot of people did more climbing than they're used to, but like I always talk about the trace. There's the sections out there that. You know, are huge street, you know, kind of steep climbs, but the parts in the middle are these rollers that um, are probably about, you know, they're definitely some of the toughest rollers you you would even face in any, at least the races, Ironman race, any of the races I've done, because they're just a little bit bigger than normal rollers, and you have to, you know, navigate those for, you know, maybe five miles or more sometimes, and um, you get, you, you know, you get used to gearing. Um, and that people see how important gearing can be. And if you can sort of figure out the gearing on some of these rollers, the other ones that you face won't be as difficult because you got to make a decision if you're going to power up them or if you're going to gear way down and things like that. Mm-hmm. You learn how to make speed and going into them and, and the importance of stuff like that. And, of course, the climbing. And then we did, you know, a little running off the bike, not a ton, but just, to you know, what's what's it like when you ride – crazy hills and then get off the bike and just run for 20 minutes or whatever and mm-hmm. just to have that feeling and then you go run uh the run that we uh, do in percy warner pretty much covers the gamut you know of any <laughs> any race you're yeah. going to see because there are you know long and winding roads there are turns and there's of course very steep climbing and there's very steep descent and then there's like very nice perfectly angled running towards the end of it which you can uh, air out and stretch out the you know open up your legs and you know that you just experience all that stuff and then we got got them in the pool and you did a lot of pool instruction in there and they were uh racing each other and 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 timed out on a hundred and then towards the end of the after instruction we did a hundred again to just see if there's an improvement and um the open water swimming with the contact uh the 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 stressful starts the experiencing the cold water the contact with other people the kind of currents in the lake that force you to really work on your sighting 
and uh, there was just all these. Uh, and then we got to the lab and did, you know, ha- you know, hard flat riding and aero. Got a lot of that out of the way, and a little bit more running off the bike hard. And you know, that just sort of covers the gamut. I think that that we talked about this in a you know simulating race podcast before, but to me, those are the things that go the longest way. Like, how do you how do you simulate that by yourself? Sometimes it's difficult, you know. But when there's other people around, kind of pushing you a little bit out of your comfort zone, and you can uh, you can adapt and and identify with other people's uh, effort and speed and things like that, and learn from their power and whatever the case may be. There was a lot of lessons to be learned. Yeah, there's there's just there's a lot to be applicable there's a lot to the race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and and I think you know the pe- having people around like it's always easier to produce or perform when somebody else is watching. <clears throat> you know, in terms of not want just you just do it. You just, you push yourself more. You know, for 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 the most part. And you know, I think that is like there's to put yourself in race scenarios and then to do a lot of things that you know. And I got to give a lot of credit to the athletes that were at camp. Like you know, a lot of things that we do, you have to just be very, very flexible, you know, with. And uh, a lot of times, you know, I like to—I don't—I don't, I don't say surprise, but you know, like we did on Saturday, we, we we were in the lab for about an hour, and there were every single athlete was working incredibly hard. They had no idea what they were going to do next either, and. You know, they were doing all out efforts with some recovery. And then all of a sudden, I just kind of wheeled up to them and said, Hey, and in, in about, you're not going to know when, but in about the next 10 or 15 minutes, at some point, I'm going to, I'm going to ride up next to you and I'm going to say, Go. And you're going to sprint to your car. You're going to, un- you're going to get off your bike, put on your run clothes, and I want you to come out and run the best 5K you possibly can. So very much a race effort. And then I'm going to tell you who you're chasing. Uh, because we had, you know, like I said, 16, 20 athletes there on Saturday. And I tried to seat them in best way. So I give the person, you know, that may be a little bit, uh, a tad bit off, you know, a little bit of a slower pace in front of somebody about a minute to minute and a half. And so they had, you know, kind of a rabbit to catch. And people just went out in straight in straight race mode but they all said like yeah i wouldn't have i wouldn't have taken i wouldn't have gone so all out on the bike efforts if i had known we were going to do the 5k after <laughs> you know and so uh-huh. you can you can kind of sneak attack them but a lot of them said like that was that was close to like my 5k pr that was only 40 seconds off my 5k pr you know i ran you know i, I negative split i ran faster and so there's there's a lot of things that they can learn and i think one of the other things we talk about this a lot is you know oftentimes it, it and I heard this from a, a more athletes even though I kind of expected you I heard it from more than I really thought I would was that a lot of them had their fastest mile as their last one you know and they all kind of said hey it take it took me about a mile or two for my legs to really really open up uh, and then I just then it almost felt easier and so like little takeaways like that um, that you can take to a race and think oh. You know, my pace is only this, and my legs only feel like this. Um, but I know now that I can look back at camp and say, "Hey, well, I remember then, like my first two miles, my legs felt like crap anyway, and they eventually opened up. So I know they're going to open up here too." Uh, but yeah, there's there's race day scenarios and and little things like we talk about, you know, siding with the current and how you should how where you should start and how you should approach buoys like going in and going out how to sight in the way back in contact and gearing on the hills and climbing hills and descending and and all those things it's it's, it's a very friendly um a very f- uh, training friendly environment um that we have here that's that is that it's also challenging um but you have other people that you can look around and see that everyone everyone is being challenged uh, and that's 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 one of the reasons why I like you know so much like the way that we set up camp is that no matter what skill level you are, everyone is being challenged. And so you knew when they when you got done, nobody had it easier than another person. Right. You all were getting challenged, and you all worked hard. Um, I mean, we had some athletes that were doing close to three thousand feet of climbing in in un- under two hours. <laughs> you know, which is. Which is uh, which is crazy, but you got to work on climbing, you got to work on descending, and you know we just were very, very, very fortunate to be able to work on those things and, and bike handling on, on like the Natchez Trace, where athletes that aren't really uh, super um, experienced at descending 
you know, on the trace, you can do it because you've got these long, gradual descents with no crossroads, no stop signs, no stop lights, no tight turns. It's just straight, you know, and so it's it's a good way to help people kind of practice that way as well. So, um, but it is there, there's a there's a lot to be said for putting yourself in in not so much race speed or race effort scenarios, but race circumstances mm-hmm. um, where you can rely back and you know, you should always do that somewhat in training and rely back on that and plan for that accordingly. And, and it kind of goes back to what we talked about at the beginning was in plan on that with the nutrition, you know, and take, taking care of your body and being, you know, don't, um, don't sleep on, on any workout because, you know, the workout you go out with and, you know, don't have any, I mean, I, I paid the price, uh, on Saturday for, you know, it was kind of, we, uh, we got done with, or we were, we met for lunch after a, a pretty hard ride on the trace and then we're heading over to Percy Warner. And if you've never done the Percy Warner, most of you haven't Percy Warner five, eight, it is a incredibly hilly, uh, five, five. I don't know. I don't think we had, uh, we had a lot of, most athletes I think had to walk at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, even the ones that fin- that came in finishing first, almost every athlete I think uh, had to walk it at some point. That's how hilly it is, and that's how I mean their legs were tired as well. But I got to the I got to the uh, our starting point in a little bit of a rush because I wanted to make sure I marked the course with chalk. That way nobody could get lost. And I went off with with no water and no nothing and, and ended up really, really putting in a pretty solid effort to make sure I got back in time. Uh, and it was hot and then I didn't have anything with me at the end. And I woke up the next morning feeling like I had just run like a marathon. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, but you know, but it wasn't so much because, you know, was it a little higher effort? Sure. But was it more so the effort combined with the lack of hydration and fueling? Absolutely. You know, my, my, um, you know, just totally depleted it so yeah there's there's a lot of ways and and just like you do in training you know the uh just like in workouts where you look at a workout think oh that looks easy and then so you underestimate and you go out and you get dominated you know same can be said we're going out think oh i can probably get this run in without any fueling whatever i'll be fine and then that 40 minute mark hits and you're like dude i totally should have taken some fuel (laughs) and and not only the last 20 minutes gonna suck but um the next day and the next morning, you're going to feel a lot more wrecked than you did the day before. Yeah. Well, one of the guys, I was talking to one of the guys and um, he was a little bit uh, frustrated after a couple of those tough days. And, and well, he hasn't even done a triathlon yet, but he's been training for a while and he uh, came down with the, his buddy. And we were talking about like, cause, because it was very hard for him. You know, it was something that he wasn't used to. Like you said, he's coming out of Minnesota, and they hadn't been outside yet. And 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 I told him that I really, you know, sort of recognized some of me and him because it was sort of early in that process and how deflating it can be because your mm-hmm. body isn't ready for it. Or, you know, your body isn't used to it, certainly, and your mind isn't ready for it either. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it was a lesson in, um, you know, we, we talk about the slow burn all the time and being patient and not going out of your comfort zone. But like you said, there was different levels of effort you could put in and everybody had a good workout no matter how good a shape they were in. But he kind of, you know, he got through it and I could tell he was a little bit frustrated with his performance, uh, you know, a lot of times versus the, the other people in the group or whatever. But um, it's one of those things where, at some point in this sport, you're going to, you know, you have breakthroughs, you know, you have little like wake up calls and things like that. And he sort of made it through some two really tough days. Now you're talking about a guy who hasn't done a triathlon yet. And on, was it Friday? Yeah, Friday, we basically did probably one of the hardest Olympics you could do. Yeah. You know what I mean? We true. rode 30 miles on the trace mm-hmm. and then rode the, and ran essentially a 10K, 5.8 on, uh, at Percy Warner with 700 feet of, gain or something like that in an, in five and a half miles and then we went out to a freezing cold lake and ran sprints along the the sand and relays and all that kind of stuff i mean i don't know if it added up to a whole olympic but basically it simulated a very difficult olympic and uh he came home that night a little bit like wow man i don't know if this is my the thing for me and then had a good night's sleep we recovered and the next day we went out and rode hard on the lab and did a nice run and 
but the things that he i think he what he realizes it um is that once he got through that he was like okay and and it just starts building your body kind of starts adapting and you're going to have those phases where it's super frustrating you know and i think a lot of people that came to camp maybe experienced that at least on different levels that wow i don't know if i'm ready for that but you have to understand that when you're going hard and pushing yourself that your body has to figure things out and your mind has to experience them to understand how things feel and then once you get used to that feeling it's not as uh mysterious anymore and because mm-hmm. like think about it if you're going out and like the i remember the first time i rode the trace i didn't know what it was like and it just seemed like it kept getting worse you know because you keep riding and the next thing you know it's like oh i think we're almost done and then no we've got 10 <laughs> miles left and yep. they're all worse than the first 10 miles that you just did or whatever mm-hmm. the case is and to you know, when you're when you want to be done and when you don't want to be doing that that can really like be hard but it's just those uh growing pains along the way that you know i i just i guess what i'm trying to point out is when you push yourself sometimes like that like you're going to go back and do your normal workouts and they're going to seem like cake it's it's kind of like when i finished when i did my first iron man when i came back and i got in the pool you know i wasn't used Mm -hmm. to swimming that far in training per se and then and certainly not in a mass start with massive contact the whole way along the way and then when i came back to the pool i just remember like laughing at 2000 meters you know <laughs> it was just kind of yep. like it, it, you know 2000 meters is a long way for most people in the world to swim but it was just sort of this like wow my body just went through that and uh and now i'm ready for you know the simple things in life kind of thing well, it's, you know, it's like just as we talk like mentally, it's like, I think this is actually like the last podcast we did was, was that, you know, it's all, it's also so much of what we do and what our goals are and our expectations and, and, or the limitations we put on ourselves are all based on, are all in our mind. You know, mm-hmm. I'll never be able to do X, you know, I'll never, like I had an athlete, who was with us at camp this last weekend and she was we've been working together since like december and she was she was like i i basically couldn't you know because a lot of athletes based on where they live it's if it's super flat they just kind of convince themselves they're terrible at hills mm-hmm. and she's like i just i don't i, I hate hills it's there you know which one came first i hate hills and so i'm not very good at them or i think i'm not very good at them so i hate hills and she was like i'm just terrified but um, she has this cool thing with her husband to where she lets her husband pick a race venue, uh, at least one of her race venues for the year and to like make like a vacation out of it. And he picked Lake Placid. And so their 70.3 is really hilly. And um, she was like, yeah, I just don't know if I can do it. And I was like, yeah, sign up. We can do it. And she comes to camp and she does these hills. She's like, "That's like the you know the fir- very first day. That's the most climbing I've ever done, <laughs> ever." Yeah, and I'm a lot better than I thought I was at these. And then the next day, you know, she basically climbed over five thousand feet in two in twenty four hours, uh, in two separate workouts. And a lot of it. And then you you know so you you go back and you're in your training environment and you see race uh, race maps or or training grounds and you're you know. And a lot of it's like, yeah, no, do we live in the, you know, the Pyrenees here in Nashville? No, but we do have some incredibly, incredibly challenging terrain. If you, just like most places, if you want it, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, do we have pancake flat greenways? Yes. Do we have the lab? Yes. But we also have places like the person, like Percy Warner or the Trace where people like, literally just travel here to train on them because they're so great and and they're so challenging but now you you leave you leave a camp and you think okay i've ridden on the trace and i climbed this many feet so i'm i'm a better climber you you go to percy warner and you think that was the hilliest run i've ever done you you go swim and you compete in open water with challenging conditions and sub 60 degree water all these things you probably told yourself you would never be able to do or that you would just refuse to do and opt out and choose something else but you put yourself in these situations i think you just you grow as a person and as an athlete and as you begin to as you begin to become more confident in those areas you're able to expand 
you know, the your mental fortitude in choosing not just choosing like training options, but choosing races. Well, maybe I can do that. You know, and it's so much of what we do in, in training and in racing and in life is like is just proving ourselves that we can actually do something that we often often doubted that we would ever be able to accomplish. And you know, I think that when you when you force yourself, because let's be honest, more often times than not, based just based on the the nature of society and the sharing of social media and the you know, beating people is we all want faster paces. We all want higher miles per hour. We all want to show off these things. And so taking the hardest, the hardest route, whether it's an open water swim, whether it's a super hilly climb or whether it's a, a really challenging run, you know, nobody looks at how, oh, how much elevation did you climb? You know, how hard was the current? You know, like those things don't, don't, uh, they're nothing you can really, there's nothing you it's, it's nothing you you can show off until race day um but it's you learn so much about yourself and choosing those routes and choosing and knowing that you know you're becoming stronger and and just choosing that alone i think does a lot for athletes confidence just making that choice to make it more difficult or like you said you were talking about the athlete who attended camp who had never done a triathlon i mean the things that he put himself through this weekend, I mean, not many athletes I know would do that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and sort of being in conspiracy and not knowledge, and, and I was even riding with him on the car the way to lunch one day. I was like, dude, and you got to give yourself a break. You've like barely been doing this for like any amount of time. And he has a very, very difficult schedule in that he's away from, uh, away from, he's out of town for seven days straight. So he has no access to a bike or rarely ever a pool, you know. And so it's just like you got to kind of you you have a train train your own life just like you live your own life and not compare it to others. But yeah, there's just a lot to be said for athletes that choose a harder, more difficult path, knowing that they're learning something. They're not just looking for the easy way out today. Yep. You on track, Alc? <laughs> uh I am and I'm I'm looking for the um elevation part of tri calc. They don't have oh, yeah, they, they, it. It was yeah. cool though though to see like everybody got done with their rides out there and 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 the runs and it, it it's funny they said that well because it wasn't I rarely heard anybody talking about speed this weekend. They were all talking about elevation. Mm-hmm. And that's that was sort of the the source of pride in a way uh, that we did this we climbed this many we climbed and you know you can't really throw in a a good average speed out there it's i mean not many people write home about their speed on the trace and no uh, or percy warner runs i mean you know if you're if you're running sub nine out there you know you're pretty pretty fast runner yeah um for triathlon you know but it's like i don't know i just think in general um I just can't get over the fact that the people that come to camp, how supportive they are of each other, how encouraging they are and patient. And it's just a good vibe, man. Uh, It really, it lifts me up. It uh, reminds me as well. But I think everyone that came was just like and i'd like to think i they were inspired to get home and just go to work and they're really excited about their race coming up and mm-hmm. i think in a, uh, a lot of ways that uh sort of is the essence of what we're trying to do here is uh find that sort of source of inspiration find that happy place in triathlon find that like will and desire to really be your best in the sport and in life but you know like find that like excitement about getting back in there and going to race and and i think that that's sort of what happened here again is that uh the people found their uh found a new level of confidence maybe and i think confidence can create happiness uh in a sport like this because you know once you see yourself being able to do something that you weren't sure you can do all of a sudden you know, you're going to go back and compare that. That's going to be the new baseline or the new, you know, the new bar that you just set. That's like, hey, hey, I can do this sort of thing. And now my training should elevate. 
and my racing it, should elevate. Yeah, and it's and it, it's so much of it's also about the choices that we make. You know, like we on Saturday or no Friday we did basically the the goal was to see how much elevation you can climb in in two two and a half hours. Yeah. And we've got the parking lot, and on about a mile or mile and a half, two miles on each side of the parking lot are these really one really, really, really long hill, and then a short, you know, three to four minute just like straight up pincher. And that's as far as we went. And just watching the athletes uh, from the parking lot choose to just bypass stopping. To go back down, because listen, if, if you climb a lot of hills, you know, as great as the descent is, it's kind of like a, it's kind of just like a also kind of painful, <laughs> because you know you got to go back up, and just watching the athletes continuously submit themselves to another and another and another, uh, when they could have just peeled over and be like, yeah, that's it for me today. That's all, you know, that's it. I'm done. They push themselves to the max mm-hmm. when stopping, when rest, when water, when excuses were all there right at the center of the workout in the parking lot. They came back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to do it again, to push themselves again. And I think I think a lot of times when we do that in training is I think you can there's so many ways you can do that. It's more of an affirmation. See, you can do this, mm-hmm. and you can do it again, mm-hmm. and you can do it again. And it's almost, you know, it's when you're doing something new, you're overcoming something new. It's like you need to, you need constant affirmation and reminding yourself that you can. And like doing it once, you're like, oh, maybe that was just luck. But not if you do it two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Then it becomes more of a habit. Yeah. Then it becomes more of who you are, and then it becomes more of a. I expect this out of myself. You, you guys might not want to do this or with your regular training partners or training grounds. And so I have, I have to, at least I'll, I hope and I'll tell myself, it's like, you know, when athletes listen to either the podcast and we talk about, you know, Hills are your friends. And like when they get back, like, yeah, I'll, I want to do the harder route and learn something and get something out of it and become stronger. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's not so much what you can, you know, what you can show on your garment or your training peaks or your strava or whatever it's it's more about what you, you yourself are getting out of it yeah and and that's i think that's the stories that people can that leave with from camper the, the stories behind what they accomplished it's never how fast rarely how fast they went it's what they it is it's just and that's what training is in triathlon it's 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 always about what you're Aren't, are you always learning something about yourself? And you always are, whether it's a day off or whether it's a skip to workout or whether it's where you push through or that you did something more difficult. You're always learning about yourself. Uh, and that's and that's something that we can all do each and every day regardless of, of where we are or training with friends or training slow or training solo. You can always uh, learn something about yourself and apply it and hopefully go for the next day. Mm-hmm. And one more point on the hills, and I hate to keep harping on this, but I think that when, you know, people have a hill intimidation for the most, you know, if you're not around a lot, if you're riding on flats or whatever, the hills part, and I mean, the, the people think of hills and they think of those big steep hills that they got to climb and they, they, they equate that with a hilly course and a high elevation course and that's the hard part and the descents, they're afraid of the descents and that sort of thing. So when we go out there and we practice those on repeat and get that kind of fear subsiding in their heads and get the uh, belief system going where they, they can climb those slow, climbing, long climb hills and things like that, once you kind of get that into your comfort zone and you can believe in that, then you can really focus on where the race is uh, won and lost. It's on the rollers. <laughs> I mean, I'm just convinced that like... People just say, oh, it's only rollers. But rollers mm-hmm. are where people ruin their... I mean, they can. it's just so easy to be in the wrong gear and push yourself into a, a weird power spot to me. I mean, I, I just think that, like, you know what I mean? It's like, get that climbing part out of your... You're not, the race isn't going to be lost on a, on a you know, half mile kind of steep climb. It's going to be, you know, 111 and a half other miles 
or whatever on Iron Man. But it's like, it's then you can start thinking about, all right, what am I doing on these little weird uh, in between kind of hills, and how do I stay consistent through that? Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of start honing your whole ride a little bit stronger once you believe you can get those hills, the steep, the climbs out of the way, and you know how to handle the bike on the descents. And it's just sort of a, a slow. Um, puzzle that you're putting together because it's never over you know there's always going to be something on a ride that uh, uh, you might not be thinking about but you may you know whether it's that or like even cornering you know like uh, bad cornering and over the course of an Ironman can cost you you know five minutes yep so those are the little things that you once you get that fear out of your head about the big hills then you can start dialing in the other parts of the ride and it all comes together, you know. I, I think it's got to be a great feeling to get out of get out of there and, and realize that, you know, hey, I can climb these big hills, and they're not going to beat me down, and I can recover and what have you. But anyway, on that note, uh, we would like to re-mention that uh, at crushingiron.com, we have coaching, custom coaching plans, custom coaching uh, we have the prices for all that stuff up there. It's transparent. We have two more tri camps coming up. Uh, I think June is. You said sold out. Yeah, June is full. We June is uh, full. If, yeah, if you want, we have a, actually a wait list for June. If you want to hop on that wait list, or you want to go ahead and hop in for August, you can do that. But I imagine that um, August will be sold out as well here in the next week or two. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, people are having a great time at camp. Um, we got that going. We've got the next big event will be fifty plus from our closed group, which you can find on Facebook at Crushing Iron Group in the search and send us a request. We'll let you in. Closing in on a thousand people in there with great conversation, and at least fifty of us in that group alone are going to Chattanooga seventy point three to race it. So if you're going and want to kind of hang around a bunch of like-minded people, uh, get in there and let it be known. If you're lurking in the group and you haven't introduced yourself, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. Make some friends. Reach Make out to your friends. comfort zone. You know, um, we all need to isolate, but uh, you know, sometimes we need to come out and say hi. You don't really need to isolate. You just need to, to nurture your, your introvert. Nurture your introvert, yeah. I, I yeah. like that. Yeah, that's put what that I'm doing today. It's nurturing your yeah put, that, <laughs> yeah, put that in the show notes. But yeah, and, and thanks again for everyone who's left us uh, iTunes reviews. So those are always appreciated. And uh, if you uh, can, and if this is one of your first, or if you listen to many and you haven't taken the time, uh, please go to iTunes and make sure you subscribe. We come out with two podcasts a week, Monday and Thursdays. And uh, we've been doing that for about a year and a half. And uh, leave us a review. Let us know what you think. And uh, most importantly, you know, f- please feel free to to hand um, hand this over, hand this podcast over, share share it on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever it is that they have now, uh, and share it with other athletes. You know, one of the greatest um, joys about that I've had from doing this is just the the growth of a really awesome community that we that we have, and that's all about the listeners. Uh, and so, you know, please feel free to share. Uh, and help grow, and we could all use a little more support. So uh, feel free to share it. And if you have any questions, comments, you can always email Mike at crushingiron at gmail.com, or you can always reach me at c26coach at gmail.com. All righty. All right. I'm going to go pull up my chair and get to work on some training plans and uh, have the old Boston Marathon in the background. All right. Enjoy, buddy. I'm going to be working all day. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> All right. See you later, everybody. Down, 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 down.